Hi there, it's Ben Housel here, and here I'm going to do a follow-on tutorial from a question I got to this tutorial on how to create a play bar on the bottom of your video, and that was how to add an emoji um, onto the play bar so the emoji moves across as the play bar is moving across as well. So there's a few different steps in this. Um, we'll look at everything from start to finish, so how to create the play bar again so that you don't have to go back to the other video, and then how we match up the movement of the emoji so that it follows the play bar perfectly. So first things first, we'll hit pause here and remove these layers. So we'll click and select those layers. So basically this video that you can see in the background is from another tutorial um, I just created on how to add this effect with a plasma ball inside an eye. So go check that out. And the first thing we're gonna do is create the play bar on the bottom of our video here. So we'll run through this from start to finish. So the first thing we're gonna do, if you see your library up at the top left, you need to come into the generators and type generators and we're going to add a solid so if you see the titles up here and generators you just need to open up the generators and jump into the solids options here and here we'll grab the the custom solid and drop that down to the timeline and i'll just stretch this out so it fills the whole timeline so first things first we're going to crop this from the top and bottom so we see the play bar, where it's gonna be, and then we'll also change the color. So with this selected, we'll jump up to the inspector on the top right, and we're gonna go into the generator inspector, first of all, to change the color. So we're gonna grab a color from our color inspector here, and we're gonna go for this nice bright pink to kind of work alongside our blue that we've got there in the background. And then we're gonna come back to our video options, and we're gonna crop this from the top down to around about here. And what we'll do differently to the last video, maybe we'll crop this from the bottom a little so we get the play bar within the video rather than sitting right at the bottom. So what we'll do now is duplicate this. And the bottom bar here is gonna be just the background gray to our play bar. And I duplicated that just by holding down the Alt key on the keyboard and dragging up to duplicate a copy of that so you can see we can just hold down alt and it will allow us to duplicate copies of a layer or of a video so we'll select this background layer and we'll go back to our color and we're just going to change this to a kind of lightish gray which we'll see when we hover over it or when we reveal the play bar so now uh, for the play bar itself um, we're going to come to the end of the video where it's going to be finished and to actually get to the last frame of the video, you need to come to the end and you can use the up and down arrow keys to do that and then press the left hand cursor once and that will show you this film strip across the right. And that's important for animation because it means we know we're on the very last frame of that video. So now we'll come to our video options here and we're gonna set a keyframe for our right hand crop um, to zero. So basically we're not cropping anything from the right we want the play bar to be right across the end there. And I've just noticed a little mistake here, so I'm gonna remove that keyframe. We've got the wrong layer selected, so I'm just gonna select this topmost layer and then re-add that keyframe. So make sure you've got the right layer selected when you're doing your animation, otherwise nothing will happen. So now we've got that keyframe added at the end with the right hand crop set to zero. We'll come back to the beginning. And when we add our next keyframe, because we've already set a keyframe on that layer, we don't need to actually add it, we just need to make a change on that layer. So I'm gonna crop from the right, and we should be doing the full width of this video, which is 1080. Um, now, I've noticed a couple times before, sometimes it will crop much larger than the actual video itself, but we just need that to be at 1080, so it's right at the beginning of that video, otherwise we we'll, won't see any animation right at the beginning. So now when we play this, we get our play bar moving across, and now we need to put the emoji layer onto this video. So you can see there by setting the keyframe at the beginning and the end, we have that play bar working perfectly across the whole of that video. So we'll come back to the beginning, and in order to add an emoji um, to our video, we need to add a text layer first of all. So we'll come back up to our titles here and we're going to go into the bumper open the titles where we'll find the basic titles we don't need anything fancy in here we can just select this and drag it down to our timeline and we'll stretch this out 
so it fills that whole timeline so we're just snapping it to the end there so with that type selected we're going to come up to the the type options up here and there isn't an emoji option right in the type options up in the inspector we have to bring up the emoji panel so if we come to the help menu and just type in emoji and you can do this for any menu that you're looking for under the edit menu you can see we have the emoji and symbols panel or window that we can pop up if we click that we'll see a list of different arrows so if you're looking to add arrows to Final Cut Pro um, you can do that we can add arrows to Final Cut Pro you can do that we can add bullets we can add currency symbols so they're all organized nicely in there so we can add these different types of symbols into Final Cut Pro now we'll come up to the emoji panel here in our window and we're looking for this example uh, for a surfer so we can scroll down here and kind of look for it or we can use the search options up at the top here and type in surf and we'll see the different surf characters pop up there for us so we're going to grab uh, this lady surfer and we'll drag this across into our text now when we're using Helvetica here I'll just delete the text in our options up here the emoji symbol won't show up um, perfectly from the get-go so you can see we've got these three symbols um, here instead of the the pink surfboard and the surfer lady so we we need to actually come to our font and change this to and change this to apple color emoji so scroll up almost all the way to the top and now once you've selected that font you can see we have the, the symbol that we've chosen from the emoji. So we'll close this window down now and we're just going to increase the size of this a little bit. And I want my surfer to be going the other way and so we're going to flip that and the way we do that is come back to the video panel up here on the top right and we're going to scale just the X scale by minus 100. So if I click the 100% there and just type in minus 100 and that will flip the direction of our emoji. So now we're going to do the rest of this um, by using keyframing and the transform tool. So basically what we want to do is actually bring our playhead back to the beginning and we'll bring our surfer, the anchor point for the surfer, down and snap it right to the left there. Okay. And we can change the anchor point in a minute um, so that this will actually animate a little bit closer to our line. But for the moment, we'll start with this snapped um, down here. And we'll add a keyframe for the position. And then we'll come ahead in time, come back one frame so we see the film strip. And then we'll pull this across to the right hand side. And I'm going to hold down shift as I do this. And that means that it will only move horizontally, it won't move vertically as well shift constrains your movement to one axis. Now if we have a look at this you can see there's a little bit of smoothing in our animation for our surface so it kind of speeds up and slows down at the end which means that it matches but not all the way through so you can see it kind of separating a little bit at the end there and the play bar being a little bit ahead in the beginning. Now the way to fix that is if we just come to these little grey symbols at the beginning and end of our animation and right click or control and click We'll add that and change that to linear. And now if we kind of come somewhere to the middle, we can see that our surfer is matching the play bar all the way along. And now what we want to do is actually adjust the Y position and just make that surface sit right on the, the line there. Now, for some reason, um, even though we don't want it to, the anchor adds some keyframes in here. So I'm going to remove the keyframes here and actually just reset this um, and modify the, the Y axis and making sure I don't have any keyframes turned on there otherwise we'll get a little bit of animation where our surfer will stray away from the end of that line. So now if we scroll back to the beginning and move all the way through you can see that surfer is sitting tight to the line and is following that perfectly. So if we play that through We have a surfer emoji on our line um, as it's playing across. So if we want to change that, we could 
lift up our surfer emoji so it was uh, kind of above the line or in a slightly different spot um, but it would still follow that line so we're just modifying the anchor point um, so that we change the position of that now if we wanted to add multiple surfers so let's copy this layer so I'm just holding down the alt key again to duplicate this and I'm going to click here come up to my type options and I will just bring back up my emoji options here and we have a few different options for surfers and we can double click and it will add in a new server there so we'll delete one of these ones and now we can come back to our video options and add in a slightly different offset onto that layer so we have now two surfers following that line to the right the animation is duplicated with the layer so we can move things we could actually offset one a little bit to the left so they weren't in exactly the same spot we could come up and modify the scale although we need to modify that uh, carefully because actually we need to flip the negative numbers in a slightly different way so I'm dragging to the right there to reduce the size which doesn't seem entirely logical um, but it's working um, so now we'll move this back and we can have multiple surfers as you can see playing back with that play bar just close my emoji window there and so that's how to add emojis or other elements to move along with your play bar in Final Cut Pro 10. So as I mentioned, this is an answer to a question I got on a previous tutorial. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro, or if you want to go and check out my full tutorial on the website Skillshare, then please do, or leave a comment below um, to ask your questions. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.